Dave here, how are you? You might see that I've got things set up slightly differently at the moment. I have the monitor and the camera over on the right hand side here because I will be using the assembly table to throw a sheet of melamine up, run through the table saw. I've got another camera here that's set up to be nice and close when I need it. So I hope everyone's well, hope you had a good week. Uh, it has been quite chilly here in, uh, in Australia and Southern Hemisphere of course and the winter solstice has just been so our days are going to get longer for us and for you guys in the northern hemisphere obviously you're going to be going the other direction i'm hoping the stream is coming through today is the 23rd of june 2019 this is the second last show for the financial year for australia we have, we run july 1st through to the end of june it's a little bit different around the other parts of the world Let's get stuck into seeing what's in here. What was that all about? Let's get stuck into seeing what's on the show today. We've got uh, carrier and rip and docker length, uh, doctor length, I should say, a full sheet of melamine. This is an eight foot by four foot sheet. I do it on my own, and it's quite easy because of the way that I've set this workshop up. Uh, fit draw slides to a cabinet before assembly. You will notice when I built this unit here, this table underneath, that when I put the draw slides in here, I did it all inside the cabinet. You know, it was a bit awkward, but this particular cabinet, I did that uh, because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to use the underneath for. And when I worked it out, well, then I did it. That was the hard way. This other one is a purpose-built cabinet that I'm making for the CNC machine. And you'll be glad to know, some people will be glad to know, no CNC today. We're not talking about CNC except for one person uh, who's actually bought a CNC. I'll throw a picture up of theirs being carried into their, into their workshop. But that's all. That's all. Because I did get a few people saying, Dave, um, CNC stuff leaves me cold. Well, I try, as I say, I try and look after everyone. All right. Next thing, next thing is salvage the antique dress. I continue with the project. And we're going to use the pattern following bit, which was suggested to me last week, and a couple of other little things. Uh, we're going to replace a splinter guard to a Festool track saws guide rail or track, whatever you want to call it. Uh, burnish scraper and get into a tight spot. So we're going to start off with that. This is down here. I've already got a file set up on the Stanton bench. I'm going to go to another camera and let's see if we can get it. I think I've got it set slightly better this time. Here we go. I'm going to do the transition there. Now... You'll see that I'm in the small camera, <laughs> the small screen, I should say, and the main screen over here is catching all of this. I wanted to show you on the side here, I've got the file set up. This is just an old file, flat file, and the handle hanging off the end, a couple of these guys here holding onto it. So now I'm going to swing this camera around here and bring it in as close as I can and tip it down like that. Now, that should give you a pretty good view of what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the edge of that file or the face of that file to clean up a card scraper. Now this thing here is what's called a card scraper for those people that don't know what it is. And when you get them, they feel as though they've got a little bit of an edge on the side, a little bit of a burr. Now that's from when they press the things out. Now that's not actually a burr that you can use. So the first thing we need to do, and what I'll do is I'll grab my marking pen. I'll put a little mark there. Now that's going to let me know what side I'm working on. So it's pretty easy. We're going to get rid of that burr by just flattening the edge and that's just about gone. You can see possibly that it's got a nice shiny flat surface all the way down there. I'm going to tip it upside down now and run it a little bit more. All gone. Beautiful. Now I'm going to take the file out of there and I'm going to put, remember we've got that side marked, I'm going to put that side in pull it back just a little 
Okay, so that's clamped in. This guy here is what's called a Veritas Tri Burnisher. Now, it's a Tri Burnisher, not because it's a Tri Hard, but it's got, it does three burnishing jobs rather than just one. Now, on the piece of paper that came with it, I'll tell you, it replaces, turn it up the right way, David, replaces a round, triangular, and oval burnisher. I'm going to show you the picture. Where are we? This side. Okay, so it replaces those, and it can do all of these things down here. Okay, how do you do a curved cut? Well, there you go. This burnisher will do it all. Oh, right, how do you flatten it? Well, that's a good question. That is a good question. You got me, you got me stumped there. Um, let me see. Let me see. I haven't even thought about that. I would possibly use a rat tail file or a round file, and I would mount the card on the top of the bench, hanging out over the edge, and then I'd get the file and I'd just draw it around, like so. I think that'd do it. All right. If I've got any, um, if I, if I don't get the answer, look for you people that already know how to do all this. You throw the answers in for people. We're going to help them all out. Now, the next thing to do is to put a bit of oil on this. Now, we don't have to use a massive amount. It can be a little bit of WD-40 or, or even grapeseed oil. Some in the packet, it says rub your finger behind your ear and rub that on the burnisher or on the card. But be careful that you don't cut yourself on the card because we've just made very sharp edges there. But no hook. All right, now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a hook onto, let's draw it onto the side that I've already got marked. See, I've got that mark there. So we draw the hook by angling down at around about 15 degrees. Depends on different things, but they say between five to 15, but let's pull it through at 15. Now I can do this because the burnisher, which is this guy here, is much, 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 much harder than this card. So we're creating, I can feel that already. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. We're not creating a massive hook that, you know, people can see. You can only feel it, you can hardly see it. And this hook is going to be used to drag along over a piece of timber to clean it up. If you can't get in with a piece of sandpaper or if you don't like the mushy look that sandpaper ends up giving you, a card scraper is basically a miniature plane for awkward areas. Now I'm not giving it a lot of pressure, I'm just pulling that hook over. Careful you don't cut yourself with it. Beautiful. The hook's there. That's all done. I'm going to release that. I remember, I know which one I put the hook on. It's just there. Can you hear it? It's not going to hurt me. Now, let's see if it's going to work. Pull this piece back. I've got a bit of cedar here. I'll throw the wood in there. I love this bench. <laughs> okay, remember this end here. I'll bring the camera around this side. Um, there, that should do it. Now I've got the hook there and it's just a matter of lay it down and drag it. See the dust forming? Now I can also, the steeper I pull it up, the more it's going to pull up a shaving. Like so. Whoop, over there. I've set the focus on this camera to be, I'm going against the grain there a little bit, I think. Here we go. I'll, I'll lay it down a little bit flatter. Done. There you go. That's pretty easy. I'm going to switch cameras. Ah, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Back to this one and transition. There. Beautiful. Back. Now, I hope, I hope that's just, that's a, that's a 
very basic little thing. It's a card scraper. You can get them in all sorts of different shapes. Um, this particular pack was a three pack from PAX, P-A-X. And they're a decent brand. Over here, I'm going to the wrong camera. There you go. Or look, heaps of companies make them, Veritas make them. This week's giveaway is a pack of these. This is for Australia only, of course. It's sponsored by Carbotech, gotta let you know. And the Tri Burnisher, which is this guy here. And, uh, you know, if you want a chance to win it, uh, remember I've said, I've, I got in touch with Carbotech and said, if you can jump in once a month, do a giveaway on the show, to be great. So they've said, yep, go for it. So that is there. Look in the description box. See where I'm pointing? Down there. You need to go down below this screen and some people may comment that you can't actually put a comment during the show. Well, you can. I put a comment in before the show started. The description box is there. Go down below the description box. Oh, sorry, in the description box, the competition's there. Go have a look through and you'll see it. Click on that, follow the details, and then you have to put a comment below this screen, this screen here. So down below, under the description box, comments area there. All right, that's easy. Okay, and thank you again to Carbotech for jumping in and giving us your hand there. Now I'm gonna pop these away and we're gonna jump on to the next thing, which is, what are we going to do next? Well, before I jump into the next thing, how about we have a quick look? Yesterday was the solstice, winter solstice for Australia, summer solstice, of course, for um, the Northern Hemisphere. So, you purchased a set last month, did you, mate? Unlucky. All right. Um, okay. I, I, I've just read a couple of things there. Sounds just fine. Rick, hi, Dave. Still with you, buddy. Well, Rick, this is all for you, buddy, because you said... I hate CNC stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to look after everyone. Um, it, okay, I'm getting distracted there by what's happening. Okay, so last, yesterday, it was really, really good. I went up to Katoomba and we went and saw, uh, well, I went and saw, caught a train because it was going to be packed up there for parking. So I caught a train up and watched my granddaughter do some belly dancing. Here we go, here's a quick, Quick seven second grab. Seven seconds. Here we go. So that was great. A very proud grandfather. She was, you know, she was the second from the right, if you want to watch the replay. <laughs> um, the comments appear after he finishes. Jan uh, Janice, no, they don't appear after I finish finished they are there now all you need to do is go in and uh, the comment section is below the screen if you're watching on a mobile phone or on a, um, a tablet maybe or a TV maybe but if you're watching on a desktop computer you can go in and make comments straight away all right and uh, so we had that now we also had at the same carnival we go from the beautiful to the macabre now I'm gonna give you a quick warning if you've got little kids just tell them to look away. Look away. <laughs> Here we go. This guy, unbelievable. He's a handsome fellow, wasn't he? <laughs> no area to leave a comment. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure. If, look, if it's not there, if you can't leave a comment during the show, I'll be very surprised. But look, I may stand to be uh, corrected. All right, what have we got next? What have we got next? So that was, that was good. Next thing we're going to do is, let me see what we got here. Uh, replace the Splendid Guard, burnish scraper. Let's do the Splendid Guard next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a couple of things and move the, the bench out of the way because I want to do the rest of the stuff actually here. So how easy is this? And I'll keep that clamp and I'm going to take that one off as well. Beautiful. All right, what do we got? 
Splinter Guard. This is a track saw track. This is a 1080 and it's designed for an MFT3. Um, it's just that particular length that works well with their table. Now the, on the back is the cushion strip and also the splinter guard. Now this splinter guard has had a bit of abuse over time and tears off on the corners. Now I don't know if this happens to anyone else. See how it's lifted up there and tears off all the time? Yeah. I've got a little bit of a way around. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tear it off. Gone. And I'll get some acetone. And that, and that, and that, and that, and that. And I think I've got some gloves kicking around here. If I can't find my main gloves, I'll just get these disposable ones again, which are around the back. All right. Uh, two things I'm going to mention as we're going along. I just checked and you can't leave a comment during a live show. Okay. My apologies. So, two things. Last week, when I was working in CAD, I'm sorry, Rick, I'm going to talk about it for a second. Last week, when I was working in CAD, I went from the drawing section over to the other side for the tool paths, and I said, we're going over to CAD now. Well, it's actually going over to CAM. So I went from computer-aided design or drawing to computer-aided machining. That's a bit of a mistake. Now, uh, 1080, it probably could be Alan as a rabbit killer if you hit them over the head hard enough. But why would you want to do that? Poor little butt. Poor little bunnies. We had a rabbit and his name was John Thurston. <laughs> One of our kids named it. And uh, John was a big white New Zealand bunny. He was a monster and he used to roam free. But he, um, he was very neat and organized because he, when we had him in a cage to start, he had a little run from one end of the hutch to the other. And we used to put things across his little run and he used to get cranky as, pick him up and he'd flick him out of the way. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Uh, don't, don't blow into these because you'll fill them up with moisture and they'll stick to your hands. So you just go straight in dry and easy, done. These things are fantastic. Now I have, let me see if I can, yeah, I'll go to the other camera as well. That might work. That might work. There we go. And bring this in closer. And that's going to make it a whole lot easier. Beautiful. Do the transition. There we go. So this is the area that the splinter guard was. Now I'm going to get a little bit of acetone. So that's all that is, is acetone. You don't have to see who owns it. Um, don't leave it lying around. Do not use this on clear plastics because it will send it smoky white and you'll never see through the plastic again. So basically this is nail polish remover. So I'm going to bring it right up to the edge so you can see what's happening. I've got a whole heap of old resi residue glue there from the, from the strip. So I'm going to run this all the way down. And the acetone takes a little while. It starts to uh, dissolve in. So as you're going along, you come past the next, next pass and it gets a little bit easier and a little bit easier. And it's cold. Acetone is really cold. Um, some of the guys have been saying it's been cold. I bet you it's been cold at Canberra. Oh, while I'm talking about that, because this is pretty boring, it's nearly all gone, I just wanted to say thank you to all of the people who are moderators for the show. That really does free me up to focus on what's happening rather than looking after people who are trying to be gatecrashers and, and stuff the show up for everyone. So I am very, very appreciative of everyone who's done that or who are doing it now. So it's John and Peter, and we've got um, Ian Kerry, and um, look, there's all sorts of people have, have helped. It's nearly all gone. Look at that. This is very, very important. Whilst it might seem 
crazy. Always good to watch, and your energy levels are inspiring. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Uh, you, know, you should see me after the show and before the show. After the show, I just go, fall in a heap. I bring it up closer so you can see what's happening. If I don't get these last parts off, I'm going to have big trouble. Now, I've, my glove is falling apart a little bit there because I started scratching with it. All right, so nearly there. A little more acetone and another piece of paper. Now, after we've done this, it's very important to get rid of the acetone as well because we don't want... Ah, that's better. We don't want the, uh, the glue dissolved when we put the new splinter guard on. This is something that people tend to neglect doing. Now, if you don't do it, and you've had the saw blade has wobbled around a little bit as you've been using your, uh, I'm using my thumbnail in there now, as you've been using the, the, the track saw, and especially if you tip the track saw over to 45 degrees, well then, you're gonna destroy the splinter guard. I'm telling you now, don't, don't do it. If you, if you have to do that a lot, get two tracks and use a, um, that's beautiful, that's all done. Get two tracks and use one for 45s, like if you're gonna tip the saw blade over like so, and the other one for just straight out 90 degree cuts. Okay, uh, where are we now? I'm gonna get this wet at the tap here. Don't use soapy water, just straight water. That's all you need. Okay, I'm guessing you guys are going to... I'm not watching what's happening with the chat. A little bit more. Water's fine. Just going to dry it off now. Beautiful. This is the Splinter Guard box. This is the one that Festool do over this side here. Now you'll see on the bottom, it's got a little tear off section. So you do that and it dispenses it. I buy the five meter length back over here again. I get the five meter length, not the 1.4 because it's better value. Where's my knife? There it is. Out to there. Got it. And it needs to go this there's the tape, this, the sticky stuff is under there, and we need to put it on that side. I'm gonna do a quick read. I would have thought the metho would be better as acetone is really oily. Well, it's what they recommend. They say, they say uh, the acetone. Let me see, it doesn't say anything on here, but the, all the stuff that I've read about it, but that's, that's, that's nice and clean now. It's not going anywhere. All right, peel the, uh, the cover off the sticky, and that's what you end up with over there again. And I just push it in hard against the lip. And I don't peel this all off at one time. I, I, leave, the, I leave the sticky, this part covering the sticky. So as I'm peeling it off, it doesn't stick to, um, I'm focusing, putting it down here. It doesn't, it doesn't stick prematurely and you've got to lift it up again. Okay, so as I'm going along, I'm pushing down. Because we don't want anything to distract from the sticky. So I don't want it to stick to my fingers and then get peeled off and then onto there again. So I'm just, I'm dragging this part along as I'm, as I'm doing it. Now, are the pictures coming through okay, guys? I, I try something, you know, I listen to what you guys say. And remember when I say, guys, I'm, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a unisex saying. It's, I, I, or my daughters, I call guys, hey guys, how are you? It's, it's not a, a, a male-only exclusive thing. 
well, the way I use it. And then all the way out to the end. Done. Now the next thing that I do is I clamp it in position. So I'm going to spin this camera around this way and raise it up a little. And I'm going to take it, uh, where will I put it? I'm going to put it here for the minute. Actually, I'll put it the other way up. And I've got a chunk of wood. I got a big chunk of jarrah here that I'll put on top. Now, just the sheer weight of that should be enough, but I will put a couple of clamps on it for the moment. One of the great things about this bench is the overhang. I think maybe I'll switch the cameras just to being this one. When I find the mouse, mousey, mousey, mousey. There we go, switch that one to there. That's a little bit easier for you to see what I'm up to. Okay. Ah, clamp on there. And why do I do this? I've just found it works on the ends. It's a real pain if, the, if it starts lifting on the ends. So I do this and that pulls it down. I'm gonna leave it in the clamps for about five minutes. What's the next thing? Switch around over here, back to the main camera and switch it over for you guys to see what's happening. All right, okay, everything is coming. Uh, that's what I was feeling a bit left out. Paint much thinner, much better than acetone. Dissolves glue in one third of the time. Must contact tapes uses the same base in the... Th okay, all right, I'm, I'm reading. Gone mad, guys, it's fine for everyone. Small camera is a bit fuzzy and chat is fuzzy. Well, I don't know what's... Something must be wrong with your um, setup there, Ken, because the chat looks pretty good to me from here. Uh, let me see what else have we got there. How much was your CNC machine to bring to Australia? Clint, I've asked you to send me a, a, uh, an email and I'll have a chat to you there, buddy. It's the, I don't want to talk about costs of things on the show or on the channel. Talk to me separately away from that. This is not an advertising channel. This is basically me having some fun. There's a couple of people that sponsor me through giving me things and I'm totally clear about that. Everyone knows that I'm, I'm up front with that. Uh, if you want to know actual dollars, you research it yourself or talk to me privately. Okay. All right, where are we? So just send me an email at davesantonfans. Or it's davesantonfans at gmail.com. There you go. Next thing, next thing, next thing. We've got that all squared away. Um, da, 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 da. Draw slides. Let's do, the, let's do the fit the draw slides to a cabinet before we assemble the thing. I'll go and grab them. All right. Now, we have here one that I've already done and another one that I'm going to do and you guys can watch. Now, one of the things when I'm making a cabinet is I put a label on the actual part as I'm going ahead. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to Carl Cam to make this easy for you guys to see. Here we go. Carl Cam, Carl Cam, Carl Cam. There you are. And transition. Bring it along a little and this one along. I think the show's moving along all right guys. What do you think? We're nearly halfway through. Now you'll see I've already got one of these. I've put all the slides on and this is the buddy on the other end. So I need to make sure that the edge that I've put the tape on, the, uh, the iron on tape, they're facing together because I want them. This is going to be a left. This is going to be a right or something along those lines. So I'm just going to, this isn't crucial but it's a good idea. When I say this isn't crucial, having these straw slides in exactly the same spot 
for both sides is not crucial because I set them up as I'm going through when I actually put the, the drawer onto this part. That's the part that's crucial. That's got to line up. I do not know how to make a kick drawer, Ken. Maybe someone else does. Okay, so I'm going to put a little mark there and across. There and across. Cross always means that side. And that one and across there. All right, now, where's my square? Here we go. This is a square. This is actually called a triangle. I've always called them a square, but anyway, this is a TSO triangle. So I'm going to do a line. This is easy because it's got this lip on the side, just there. And it just hooks over the edge. And this is the most accurate square that I have. They cost a bomb. But again, as I say, uh, I didn't have to pay for this one. TSO Products gave it to me. And the last one up here. This one works in conjunction with my bench very, very well. That's why they sent it out to me. They said, Dave, we think we've got something that might interest you. And it does. And I will continue the line from there. And I can do that because everything is parallel on my machinery. So the cut is very, very good. And I'm going to show you in a minute how I do that. I probably don't need to do this as much, but why not? At least it isn't a CNC happening. <laughs> ah, I know who won the IMUFs. And while we're doing this part, I'm going to switch the cameras back over here for a second. Where I keep looking up to the other camera there. Where are we? There. I want to show you something. If you have been lucky enough to win a pair of these, do yourself a favor by putting them on correctly. The lens is nowhere near as flexible the, as the ends here because it's a protective lens. They're hard and brittle. If you flex this too much, it's going to snap right down the center. So what you do is you fold the earmuff part straight down like that. You put it on your head like that. Then you roll these forward and pull them back. Finished. Do not, I repeat, do not just go reef. Of course, as sure as God made little green apples, they're going to snap. There you go. Now that was prompted by the fact that Jeremy Carter had a pair of these and he put it on the Facebook page, the Dave Stanton live stream Facebook page. Join if you want to. Um, he uh, yeah, misuse. He, he was fine with these, knew how to use them. And then one of his buddies just grabbed us. Yeah, give us a go. And he just went reef and snapped them in half. So this is how you do it. They'll last a long, 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 long time. When Jeremy uh, ordered a pair, two more of these, uh, George actually threw in a third one for him. He said, Jeremy, have a third one. There you go. Now, back to this camera. I think I'm covering everything as we're going along. I'm getting... I can't I'm looking at clocks. I'm looking at where the camera used to be. I'm a little bit of fish out of water here, but let's keep going along with this. Now, <clears throat> this is the front, and I need to make sure that I've got some um, draw slides here, which I do. So what are we going to do? I'll get one out to start. And these are a soft close. Now the mechanism is at this end and the other end is the one that pulls out. So we're gonna pull it out a little bit and we'll see where the cross is. You may or may not, there's a cross right there. I'll put a bigger one. You might be able to see that. But I'm gonna put that so that it is level with the front. Like so. You can go back ever so slightly from the front if you wish. I'm going to pull the mechanism all the way out. I'm still holding onto it there. And with my clutch pencil, I'm going to do a circle 
and a circle there, and a circle here. I think you might be able to see that if my head hasn't been in the way. And then I'm going to push it back ever so slightly to expose another circle there. That's the fourth one. Now these are 600 millimeter full extensions. And I'll do that as well down here. Uh, only for the width. So I'll do one there and one. Now if, you can mark these all individually if you want or if you've got a good square you don't need to. And if you if you've cut everything correctly at the first instance, it'll all be good. Okay. Get the square again, over here, or the triangle. I'm going to line up with the center of that and do a line. Center of this guy, another line. Center of this one. Again, if, the, if your pencil is too thick, you're going to have error increasing all the time as you do a mark. So I use a little 0.2 mil clutch pencil. I think it's a 0.2, might be a 0.5, there we go. It's half a millimeter diameter or thickness. Now I'm gonna turn it around sideways and go straight down from the top. And we're going to have Line, 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 and the last one. See the accuracy? That is brilliant. And I'm going to work from the bottom, do the last couple. And then I'm going to show you something else that you'll all go, wow, look at that. I'll flip her over because I'm getting very close to the end there. And you might be thinking to yourself, Oh, Dave stuffed himself up there. How's he going to know which line is which? Well, I've got all of these marked down here. So I know that, that, sorry, that, 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 and that are all the lines that I want. Next thing to do, we get a hold of, if I've got it there, there it is, this guy. This is called an automatic punch. Spring loaded in here, and it's very hard at the point. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna put the punch on the mark and push down. See that? I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna bring this other camera over now really close, and you can watch from here. Might be easier. So we'll go to uh, that one. All right. Is that any easier for you guys to see? So let me see. Let this, this hole here I've just done. And you might be able to see it. Whoop, there. I'll do this one next. You can watch it. So I line that up with the top. And then just push down. And then this one. And then this one. Punched. You'll hear different degrees of punch as I'm doing it. Now, I'm doing it this because melamine is a very slippery product and I don't want 
the drill to go sliding around. I want it to be, this is actually creating a dent in the product. Come on. I could use a hand punch, like a, a punch with a, uh, with a hammer, but I find this is very effective. I think I've got them all, I haven't done that one. Damn, beautiful. All done. Right, next thing to do is drill the holes. Uh, what have I got? Oh, no, okra, all right, here's another. This, you're going to love this part. All right, so now I've got greatest sound of punches. They're brilliant. I'm going to use a four millimeter brad point drill. So when I'm using Euro screw, the Euro screws, and that's what I'm going to hold these on with, I use these guys. Now that's a that's a brad point drill bit, a little spur on the end. All right, next thing I'm gonna use this. This is a stop and these are fantastic. So what we do is we undo it, slide the drill in, Oop, make sure that it's all there for me and it's fine, goes on that side and down. So it's a clamp. It's going to hold that drill where I want it to be. You watch. Now when I've tightened that up, <laughs> it's stuck on the drill bit. Can't go anywhere. All right. Now, let me see if I've got the Euro screws anywhere around. I forgot to get them out before I started. down in the other end of the shop. All right, Euro screws. I'm gonna check the length and I need to go, that's fine, that's perfectly fine because the draw slide has got thickness as well. So this will be fine. Let's put it in here. Now I'm using this drill because it turns very, very fast. This drill is a PDC 18.4. So this is the Pro Tool model. There's a Festool model as well, but same company. So this turns at 3,900 RPM. So it does a beautifully clean entry. So I'll show you how it is. And it's done. Beautiful clean entry and it's the drill stopped at the right height. So I'll just do all these. All I have to do is just sit the drill and slide it around till it feels the little punch that I've done. That hasn't moved at all. That's perfect. I think these uh, from Veritas Carbotech used to stock them. I don't know if they do it anymore. That's where I got mine, but you know. All depends on if something sells or if it doesn't sell, well then, I'm gonna just tighten that up a little. If it doesn't sell, they won't keep it on the shelf anymore, will they? What was that? beautiful. Now this here is because every time I cut a panel, I write on the panel what it is. So I'm even going to take that off and put it across there. I love it. <laughs> How nice is this? Um, now, we're going to put the draw slides on, making sure that it's going out to the front, like so. I'll slide it up until we can see it. And I'll show you close up. They're just beautiful. Tip them down a little bit. 
and then I'll just use the little CXS and the Euro screws, as I say, they're these little fat fellows. And it's a four millimeter hole I put, put in for them. I've got the clutch set to seven on, this, on the drill. And done. I'm not gonna put them all in, I'll just, I'll do, do this one. And you'll be able to see how easy it is. This is a whole lot easier than me climbing around inside the cabinet. And I'll slide it back until it exposes the last hole, which is just there. You can have a look. So when you move this all along, it will expose that last hole. You're having an exciting conversation about rabbits, are you guys? <laughs> Done. And then, this is my favorite part. You watch this, bring it around here. Soft close, I love the soft close, here we go. Magic, beautiful. All right, tip that up, and then we're gonna be ready to take that off there, switch the cameras around this way to there. 15 minutes left to go, and what have we got yet to do? What have we got left to do? I've done the draw slides. Um, we're going to run some stuff through there and we're going to throw a sheet on. I'm going to throw the sheet over the table saw first. I'll move this stuff out of the way. We may run over a little bit again, guys. Sorry about that. But if you can pick up tips from what I'm doing, great. <clears throat> Where am I up to? I have to clear this bench down. There's a bigger one as well. See this guy? That one's the bigger version. Just throw these up. I have a fan heater running here today because it was cold in here this morning. Where are we? <clears throat> Uh, what else has been happening? Not much. It's been cold, which everyone's made comment about. And <clears throat> Winter Magic yesterday, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of people there. Heaps. I travelled up by train, as I might have mentioned, uh, because parking was going to be, you know, a bit of a nightmare. And it was great, the, park, the uh, train trips, nice and comfortable. Good price. I'll take this off here. That's all good. The last thing to do on this splinter guard is to trim it, to marry it to my particular saw, but I'm not gonna do that today. There we go. So that's, that's holding really well on the end. So I've got both ends to bit of an overhang there. I'll trim that off a little bit later as well. Right. Table saw. I'll get that about there. I need to just check that I've got everything running correctly here. I'm going to switch cameras again to there. Okay. Now what I'm... Two of me, <laughs> two for the price of one. Okay, so this here I built years ago when I did the assembly table. And this is a mag switch universal rail. This little guy here is my sheet lifter. And all it is is a bit of ply with or sort of ordinary ply at the top and nice piece of pine down here and a hinge at the top and a couple of bolts. Now, I built it so that it could go in any one of these slots. So I can lift it up, I can, I can raise it up above the sheet. If I've got one sheet up here already, I can put another sheet over the top. So I go in through the second slot here, I think. Nope, let's go down lower, even down lower. That's the one. So see, I'm in this slot here. If I had three or four sheets up here, I would bring it up. It makes sense when you see what happens. That one in there to about the middle. Tighten it up, tighten it up, 
I'm going to take these guys out of there for the moment. Soft close. I love them. Okay, so this thing does this. So I'll go and get a sheet and bring it in. Move these out of the way because I don't want the sheet to jump up on there and smash those bits and pieces. And I'm going to use the Gorilla Gripper. Now I've put a link down the bottom to Amazon if you want to have a look in the description box for something that's like a Gorilla Gripper. It's, it's a cheaper version than this thing. So as I say, if you use... See this? That's how I carry sheets around. It's dead easy. If you're on your own and you want to be able to carry sheets around, get something like this. As I said, in the States, I put a link to Amazon for a cheaper version. This is, these are around $40 or $50. This other one's around about 20 something, 28, 25, something like that. I think it's going to be just as good. Now I'm going to lift it up so it sits on there, like so. Done. Now you watch how easy this is. Do you like that? One handed. There's the other hand. I'm not doing anything special. And I'm going to slide it onto the bench and let this go. Undo this. My melamine is MDF. No, sorry, it's not MDF, it's particle board. It's um, HMR, particle board, high moisture resistance. That's the one I always use. That's pretty much everything that you can get in Australia. All right, now I've got to get an 1107 by 550 out of this board and I've got to get an 1107, two 1107s by 300 out of this board. Using a VIX bit might be faster, but you know, doing it this way, I can set the whole thing out and it's done. Then all I do is just drill, 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 rather than going around with, you know, trying to line it up. I could do it with a square, I guess, if I was really uh, wanting to. Now, let's move this camera down here. And I think we've got a pretty good image there. I'm dragging things all around the, the workshop at the moment. Now, I'm going to put the stock guides on myself around the other side here. So these things here are uh, table saw stock guys and they go around this way. So this also helps me big time when I'm on my own. I've made this little jig up to hold them down. I did not want to go drilling into my uh, rip fence. I've got mag switches that lock it in. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Now, I'm going to bring the camera around to the other side because you may want to see what I'm going to do over here. And about there. Should be okay. Maybe that way a bit further. Even back down here a bit further off. There we go. All right and switch the main camera away as well. I don't think we need to have the main camera on because I'm not going to be right here where you can see me at the moment. Where are we? That one and that one. No, we want the other one. We want that one. Beautiful. Okay, now the stock guides. How you set these up is you just use a scrap from the piece of material you're going to be using. You release this. I'm going to drag it out to about here. I'm going to drop it down until the body of the stock guide is touching. Not, let me see if you can see it under there. Not the, um, not the roller. The roller is deeper. So you've, the, the body section here of the stock guide is where you do it to. Done. Now I'm going to go a little bit wider than what I want because I'm ripping an existing edge. Now the edges that they give you are absolute crap 
I'll show you when I cut it off. And I always leave myself a little bit more, rather than just shaving the edge off, I take around 10 millimeters off, keeps my saw blade in the cut and reduces the amount of dust. And I'll show you how that works. I've got this set up to 565 and the part that I want there is 550. I'm going to turn on my dust extractor before the saw because it pulls a fair bit of ampage. Now even though there's very little risk of me getting anything wrong with me, I will throw the mask on because it's going to affect my voice. With these masks, you put on that part first, pull it tight here, which pulls the head part tight, then hook it over, pull the back ones tight. And I do a couple of puffs, and it makes the valve work really quickly for me. These guys, over the top, back there. So I'm totally safe. I haven't got the blade up too high. It's sitting around about 12 millimeters above the height. This one has got an extremely sharp angle on the top. Does a lovely cut, but doesn't last as long as a triple cut. All right, this bench I made exactly the same height as my table saw. So I can slide all of this through by myself. I'm gonna bring it over until it's touching the rip fence. The stock guide has got a hold of it for me already. The second stock guide's just got a hold of it. And I grab hold of the sheet right from the rear and I'm pushing towards the fence. Around behind the sheet now. How much dust? <laughs> Look those off. How much dust can you see there? Nothing. This is a great system. A brilliant system. All right, now I'm going to bring this one back. Back a bit further. Slide him back over here to there. Bring this through. I need 550 and 300. I'm going to spin this one around. And this is my clean edge. This is my rubbish edge. This was straight, but rubbish. I'll show you. See the difference? Shop edge my edge. So I'm going to spin it around. As I said, we'll probably run around 15 to 20 minutes over today. I've got two more things I want to do. And I'm going to bring this back to 550 now. Five five zero, And that's what it says on the sheet there for me. And move that out a little further so it doesn't go tumbling off the edge. Bring this up to the point. That's where I need to cut. Put the mask back on. You can see the CNC. Don't you go looking at the CNC. It's not in the show today, John. Stop looking. <laughs> I'm gonna put this back on. Remember, on your head, tilt forwards, pull back. Dust extraction. So the dust extractor is pulling down and also up through the top here. There's a draft through there. Okay, here we go.
is my waist. And second last thing I want to do is take it up to the docking station. Move this around a little. I would have liked to have cut that as well, but I'll do that after I turn the show off. Okay. So this is my docking station. And I think you can see it all right there. Yep. How I move these things off here. Over to here. And that and that and that. Where are we? The track saw must be around somewhere there. I'll grab this sheet. Now when the sheet's cut in half, I don't need that Gorilla Gripper anymore. This will be fine. Put this up. Beautiful. Pencil, and I think the pencil is there. 1107. All right, so being 11.07, I want to make it a little bit longer. Let's go 11.17 from the end. Or 11.20 will be fine. 11.20, there. Slide it along. Now, when you do this, the, the docking station is really clean to start. If I was doing another piece and been cutting a while here, you can get crap sits on the table. And as you push it up, it's going to push against the fence, which will give you a wrong cut. It's not going to give you a square cut. I've set this up to be perfectly square. So I'm going to slide it along, drop this guy down. I've already set the heights. Until that mark just pops past. Good. That's all good. I'm going to throw these ones on this time. We're getting there. <laughs> okay, I'll raise it up a little. There we go, that's a little bit better. The track saw is set to being 25 millimeters. So this is 17, five millimeters in the saw, in, in the track I should say, so it's 27 and five, that's uh, 17 and five is 22. I'm going through three millimeters into the base and here we go that's my piece i'm going to cut once i've done this cut i will in turn it around and set the length and cut it to the, to the right length if you cut slowly you're going to get a cleaner cut My waist is this end. This is my good end. And you'll see this, there's also a splinter guard on the saw and that is a really, really nice cut. So when we bring it back, push the corner in against the fence and then slide it along like that. And that will clean off all of the rubbish as you're going along. Mark the length again. 11.07, because remember I cut a little bit longer. 11.07 is there. Which one? Two marks there. Not to worry, I know which one it is. Here's another little thing. That lives down there for me. Or up there, wherever I want. Drop that down, just roughly for the moment. It's holding up so the cushion strip isn't grabbing it yet. Up to the line. That's him. It's in the slot. That's all good. Last cut. Again, 
I could have pushed that through really quickly. Look, there's no real advantage. It's going to give you a shitty edge. So, let's have a look. That's really nice. That's just the first mark. I put two marks. Remember I said which one? That's a nice clean edge. All right. So that's a panel that I've got cut. It's nice and square. Spin this around this way so you can see me. Um, I've got one more thing I wanted to do. So I'll leave all of this set up here and we'll take the camera down the end here. That's if you guys want to hang around. Totally your call. Uh, there's two things I want to do. I keep telling Paul Pice, don't I? <laughs> okay, let me see if that's going to see that all right there. I need to run a slot in the back of one of these. I'm going to do a quick read. Um, <clears throat> yes, it does. It does, Rick. It, you can raise it up and, and lower it down. Okay, you're right, John. I see the CNC as well. Good eye. Okay. Very nice. Check out all the videos of Manor Wood. Um, yeah, this, that unit that I made was because standard MFTs are not big enough as far as I'm concerned. That's another thing with the Stanton bench. You can make, if you've got two of them side by side, you can do everything that I've just done there. They're brilliant. Okay, now I need to bring this back a little until it's in line with this. I have this cutter in here and I wanted to get this done before I did the next part. Sliding back along. A little bit further. There we go. Got it. Now I need this one turned on. So the air is sucking through here at the moment. I don't know if you can see all of that. It's sucking through there. I'm going to bring this back a little and tip it up. About there. Looking around for my eye muffs. Put that around the other side now. That's all good. And I'm going to create a dado on the other side of this part of the Stanton bench. That's locked. I'm just using the rip fence as a guide. Put that in there. Turn her on. See it? I don't know if you can see, it's just going straight down that hole. And the other one. Look, I'll make everyone happy. You should really use push blocks. That's those two done. As there's just something I wanted to get done. While I have that cutter in, I'll turn that dusty off. This is the little one. That's the, um, that's the little CTL SIS. It's a great little dust extractor. I've got it hooked up through a cyclone on its way. The track saw I was using with the, um, the, separa the Festool separator, and it does a great job. You know, as I say, it stops everything else clogging. I'll take this guy out of here. So this thing here, if that's not in, I can't turn that on. I'm going to replace that cutter in there with a flush trim spiral up cutter. That's this guy here. All right, so this has got a double bearing at the top for those that are concerned about bearing snapping and a spiral up, which means it's gonna pull the dust towards the, the machine. If it's that way up, it's gonna pull the dust this way. If it's this way, it's gonna pull it down. So in the router table, it will be pulling it down. And we'll undo this. And I've got to turn the machine off underneath here, which will allow the cutter to come all the way up. And now the spanner. I'll move this out of the way. Uh, 
and there's a double grip on these. There's the second one. I have to crack it the second time. That's a safety feature. I need to take that off and put the half inch chuck in. Call it, whatever you want to call it. And also, whenever you put another cutter in, see I'm coming through, do that, do that, and get, gets rid of, can you see it all there? This is all crap that was stuck in between the expanding parts of the, the collet. If you don't get rid of it, it can't close up and hold onto the cutter properly. So you're gonna, that's a risk. That's a huge risk for you if you don't do that. Also, don't just keep tightening this up because what's gonna happen is, if there's nothing in there to push against, if the cutter's not in there, you can jam that. If you tighten it up too much, you'll jam it in. You'll never get those things out. So you know, just be aware. Don't let it go all the way to the bottom. Bring it up maybe a millimeter or so, and then finish the, the finger tight, and then <clears throat> tighten her up. Put this cutter away in there. And here, lower this down to where are we going? All right, this is the antique dresser again. This part here was all smashed. I did this the other week on the bandsaw, and then during the week, I tidied the top up. So, this part here is what I want. So, I'm going to follow the pattern on the original up until I get to about here. To do that, we're going to use a bit of double-sided tape. And I'm also going to take this off. I don't know if you can see what, what I'm doing here. Basically, I'm taking this off here. I'm going to use a Japanese pull saw to do this. I'll do it this way around. Bit catty handed here. Good. Done. As I said, big show. And I wanted to try and get everything done on it. Double sided tape. But I am going to put this one's got to be on the top, so it's got to be that way up. And Make sure it's all clean. They call this Turner's tape. Knife. Got to get a knife. There it is. 14 past. We're not doing too bad. Have I still got sound coming through? Yep. Still got batteries. Lovely. Okay. I said the other week scratch through the back the backing paper and you should be able to get your thumbnail under there and pull up enough to be able to get a purchase on the backing paper as I say you should be able to there we go gotcha got all of that and that one and I'll do another piece so it's got equal pressure at the top and also at the bottom. So we've gone back, because it's nice and cold, we've gone back to having these um, Sunday roasts. So we've got some friends coming around at one o'clock and uh, it would be nice. You know, nice and cold outside, got the fire on. And we can chew the fat. We haven't seen these people for, it's got to be a couple of years. So it's good to catch up. And it just makes a point of it. You know, if you, if you don't have an event, people, people say, yeah, it's like, oh, we must do lunch. It never happens. 
So what we do is we say, right, well, we've got lunch happening, and it happens every week, well, you know, most of the weeks, and they come along. All right. That's the one that's going to follow. I need to put this on here. Now, I have cut this to shape already, making sure that that's all, all good. Yes. Okay. So that's, this is going to be my pattern. This is the one I'm going to trim. And that tape gets, gets a grip. So now I set the cutter so that the, the, um, the bearings, both the bearings, are going to be on the top there. So all, I don't have a bearing coming down onto here at all. It's all got to be up there. I can come up slightly past. That's fine. Now I lock it in position with my spanner. Like so and turn the machine back on itself without turning the auxiliary switch on. And I've also got to put the dust extraction on. So I have this one hose and I put this adapter in it. And this is a uh, 36 to 20. It's supposed to go inside the fittings, but it will go in the hose. 36 to 27 millimeter. And it's a left hand thread. Now this pushes into the Triton's dust port on the router. So this is another little tip. You guys get so many tips here. Don't forget to support me on Patreon. <laughs> All right. Get my head under there and see where we're going. There we go. Beautiful. In. Okay, now I can focus for a second. It's going to be turning this direction so I will need to approach it from this side. Don't approach it from the other side because you're going to do what's called a climb. Climb cuts are cleaner, but they want to grab a hold of the job and pull it away from it. So I need to go over here, turn my dust extraction on again. I could turn the big one on as well, which pulls down from the cabinet. Uh, you know what? Why not? Let's do that. Let's do it. Switching that one on, closing this one off, and turning the big fella on. Can you guys see all right? I'm gonna bring it in closer so you can watch. And down. That should be okay there. All right, this little guy here stops me turning the switch on by accident. So it's in now, and I can turn it on. All right, here we go. Until I get to there, and I'm going to stop there. Now you might see that it was going to keep on going along. I don't want to go any further there. I'm going to turn all the rest of the stuff off. <laughs> you know what? David's an idiot. He forgot to turn the dust extraction port off up at the, uh, over at the drop saw. So, not to worry. So what I've got, that's giving me a really nice follow there. Down here is where I'd use the scraper. I'd use the card scraper in that corner. I can pull this slightly down a little bit further on the tape and it'll probably even be nicer. But look at that. Doesn't that deliver a beautiful cut? As I say, I'll blend that in. And when I've blended that into there, I'll use this as the template for, these, for, the, for this one's buddy. So I have to do two of these. I'll show you. I will end up putting this one on top of that. And that will be the template. 
So there we go. I think that's about it. I do have one picture I want to show you when I find my keyboard and mouse. Where's the mouse gone? They found you. <laughs> All right, switch the cameras back over here and over to here. Um, there we go. That's, that's pretty much it. I will show you. I did say I was going to do one thing about a CNC. Here you go. Don up in Alaska has got half of his Pro 486. You want to know who won the IMUFs? <laughs> I'll tell you that in a second. So there's the uh, funny you should ask that as a matter of fact, because now we're talking about CNCs and who should win the IMUFs but Rick, Shul <laughs> Rick Shulman. I think that's how I pronounce his surname. Let me see what say Rick Schnellman. Rick is the winner and I will get in touch with George Piera from IMUFs and he'll send you a pair out. So congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. And uh, there wasn't too much about a CNC machine today. But did you enjoy the show, guys? I, I need your feedback. You let me know if I'm doing the right things. Um, <laughs> now, Rick, I didn't do that to appease you at all, buddy. I just said, select the winner from Rafflecopter and it brought your name up was the first one. I checked through the comments section, as I said, below here to make sure that you'd put a comment in there. And yes, you had. And uh, you're it. You're the winner. <laughs> so there you go. I think that's it. I'm going to have a quick read through here. Um, Rip and Dr. Length. You know, we, we covered a truckload today. So we did, we did everything there on there and on the table saw. Uh, show you how to fit draw slides to a cabinet before assembly. Now, obviously, I had already measured the distances down so that they would work with the size drawers that I'm making. It's going to have four drawers. It's going to be four feet long, this unit. It will roll under the CNC. Everything pertaining to that machine will be in this cabinet, and I'll just roll it in underneath there when I'm not using it. Um, uh, what else did we have? What else did we cover? Um, salvage the antique dresser, continuing with the project, showing you how I used an existing part as a template rather than just cutting it on the bandsaw, which I, I did cut on the bandsaw. And thank you so much to everyone saying, Dave, you should make a template. I was going to make a template and clean it all up to treat it be as nice as that. And I thought, you idiot. You've already got a template. Use that. Um, replace the splinter guard on the track saw. And I'll show you a couple of things on how to marry that in perfectly in another show or two. Uh, burnishing scraper, getting into a tight spot. I showed you where I'll use that burnishing scraper. And thank you so much to Carbotech for throwing up the, uh, the, the burnisher and also the card scraper pack. That's fantastic. Uh, what else have we got? Um, that's it. Support the channel through Patreon and the Amazon links below. As I say, the Amazon link at the moment for the United States and international is showing a cheaper version of this. But I think it's going to be just as good. It's about half the price of this one. So, you know, I paid full price for this. You guys are going to be able to get it cheaper. So use those links. Doesn't matter if it's for that or for something else. Jump in through those links and the show will benefit if you decide to grab something for it. It's a little way of, you know, me <laughs> making this worthwhile for myself. Um, what's happening in your shed? We want to see what's happening in your workshop. As I said, uh, Don Mears has just sent the picture from the, you know, he's got that little Kawasaki four-wheel drive thing taking the CNC up into his shed and he's going to have a ball putting that together. Um, the IMUFs giveaway was Rick, Rick Schnellman. And as I say, Patreons, thank you so much to everyone who's supporting me with Patreon. I think that's, a, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching uh, and keep on coming back. And I'll see if I've got this down here. I do indeed. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next week, God willing. <laughs>